Hi, Tyler. Hey, how are you? Good. Thanks for joining me. Um, we'll for just go me. ahead and get started. And if you just want to give a quick introduction of yourself first. Yeah, sure. So my name's Tyler Smith. I actually grew up relatively close to here in the Chagrin Falls, Bainbridge area. Went to school in Miami University uh, down in Oxford. And currently I work at a firm called Beast Fulmer Private Wealth Management. And we basically manage money for high net worth individuals and, and institutions. So, you know, the easiest way to put it is my job's buying stocks and bonds. So it's yeah. been a lot of a lot of activity in that in that world recently. So I'm happy to provide uh, any any insights that might be of interest. Absolutely. Um, I know that we have been talking to different YPs throughout our community who have various concerns depending on sort of what their goals and things are. So I know that you are in the investment management business. Um, what would you say to somebody who's concerned right now with all of the uncertainty happening around us? Number one, first and foremost, is just, you know, take a step back and think longer term, given the kind of the age range of this audience. You know, if it's something, if you're somebody that has, you know, a time horizon of more than a couple of years, it's always best to just, you know, think longer term. Don't get caught up in the headlines. Headlines are meant to be dramatic. They're meant to be sensational. Mm -hmm. um, so there's, there's a lot of things that are there to spook you, make you nervous. Um, it's always best to just take a step back, think longer term. In terms of investing for retirement, you know, it's always a good idea to, to you know, make that decision and invest for the long term mm -hmm. because over, over that time period, you know, these things, you know, you'll have your up and ups and downs, volatility will be there, you know, this won't be the last time we have a traumatic event uh, of like this. Um, we never know what will happen, but, you know, just kind of take a step back and know that over time, they kind of normalize out. So I think we're almost talking about two separate pockets of people, people that already have their investments and are happy with it. And they're wondering, should I be making a change or, you know, should I be moving money from one spot to another or pulling out of something, putting into another, or I don't have anything set up is now even a good time to get started. So is there anything for either one of those groups that. Yeah. So I would say I've gotten a lot more interest, which is good, um, over the last couple of weeks from people of that younger age demographic who may not have anything set up now. And they've kind of been seeing what's going on. Maybe have been hearing people talk about it. Uh, my sister actually reached out to me probably a couple of weeks ago now saying, Hey, it's now a good time to get mm -hmm. set up. And since then, probably two, three more of her friends have also reached out and said, I want to do the same thing. Um, you're probably so, like, yeah, that's what I've been telling you all along. It's always a good time. It's so funny you say that. I've been I've been bugging her. She graduated from college probably uh, a year ago or so, mm -hmm. and ever since I've been trying to get her to you know make that move. And it yeah. took like this kind of an event to get her to to get her over the line. Yeah. Um, and so for those for people in that age group, the the questions are generally you know. One revolving around timing, like, hey, should I get in now? Is now a good time to buy in? When is the right time? You know, when's the bottom going to happen? And then two, it's some something centered around, like, what should I invest in? Should I invest in, you know, the really speculative, volatile, risky things right now? Or should I be safer? Um, and so for people in that age group, um, in terms of timing, my answer is always, you know, Yes, it is a good time to be investing in in your retirement. It's a good time to put money in the stock market. Over time, it you know it always it always ends up playing out. You know, it's impossible to time the ups and downs. Kind of a fool's errand to go after trying to pick the exact bottom in the market. Mm -hmm. My best advice to people when they're starting out is you know if you have a chunk of money, just set a schedule for yourself and say. Okay, um, I'm going to start now, and I'll put you know 20 percent of it in right now. And a month from now, I'm going to do the exact same thing. And then another month from now, I'm going to do the exact same thing. And so then you're not, you know, you're not timing the market. You're not trying to pick a perfect spot because nobody knows when that is or what, you know, what what the 
situation will look like when that is. And anybody that tells you they can pick that exact moment is probably lying to you. Yeah. Well, I think there's a lot of pressure sitting back and wondering, you know, I, I do want to time it right. And so I'm just not going to do anything at all because I don't right. know enough to be able to. Right. Which out. is why I think having a, a, a defined schedule yeah. is, is so helpful for people because, you know, you can put it in, you can put 20% of your money in and let's mm-hmm. say the market takes off. You feel good that you got something in there and, right. you know, you saw it go up, um, but, you know, you still have a little bit on the sideline. So did you get everything in there? No, but you got to participate a little bit. But say then, you know, the other side of that is you put it up, put 20 percent in and the market collapses. It's like, yeah, it kind of sucks that, you know, it went down a little bit and, and I lost some money. But, hey, now I still have this cash on the sidelines that I'll put more to work. And over time, those ups and downs will average out. And, you know, you never pick one specific spot to go all in. So you never felt like you're throwing like all your eggs into one basket. Right. Um, so I think that schedule, that discipline is really helpful. And then you don't have to think about it too. You don't worry about it. Once you tell yourself like, here's my schedule, here's what I'm doing. Like you just stick to that. And that's, and that's usually a good way to play it, especially when you're thinking as long-term is, is for retirement. In that. Mm-hmm. And the second most important piece of the equation is like, all right, now I've set that schedule. Like, what do I buy? Yeah. Um, yeah. What's, so, what's kind of that next step? What's the first. So my, my kind of default advice for people getting into this their first time is for, you know, your first $10,000 ish five to $10,000, I would buy something like an S and P index fund, which is basically just the market. Um, just get in there, it gets you diversification. You don't have to worry about it much. You don't have to worry about like, you know, thinking about an individual company. And then once you have that solid base, that solid foundation where, you know, you're just invested in the equity market, you've just, you know, you've committed, you've committed to making that decision. And, you know, if you're somebody that wants to, you know, go a little further, they, they want to look in research companies and, and, um, kind of pick you know, pick stocks for themselves. Then the next piece of it is, you know, don't overcomplicate it. A lot of people, and I've gotten these questions a ton yeah. over the last couple of weeks of like, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to score, you know, the big winner here. I want to try to buy this, you know, very volatile stock or a stock that's, you know, gotten sold off in a big way. You know, I always ask them like, well, you know what they do, you know, you know how they make money. Is their business in good shape? And a lot of times it's like, no, but, you know, they've gotten sold off so hard, so hard that, you know, they've got to come back big, right? Um, Sounds good in theory. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And and the problem with that is there's a chance that could be, yeah, absolutely. But there's also a chance that you can go down a lot more. And the, the danger is if you buy things that you don't understand, you're much more likely to get scared and sell mm-hmm. them at the worst possible time. Whereas, for example, the opposite, if you went out and you bought a stock like Disney or McDonald's and you understood, you know, what they did, you'd be much better. You'd probably have a much better chance of, you know, when those stocks go down, being able to ride that out because you can still be driving down the street and see like, OK, I can still see people going through the McDonald's drive through. I understand that their business is not going bankrupt right. or, you know. Disney, I'm, I'm still going on to Disney Plus at night and watching watching movies while I'm at home. So I know those companies are there. They're, they're viable businesses. They're not going away. Yeah. And that makes it a lot easier, you know, to like ride out market volatility because you understand the company for things that are things every day. And yeah. so just don't try to overcomplicate it. It's like, oh, I want to get into this really, you know, obscure biotech stock because, you know, it moves up and down 30% in a day. Oh, yeah, that's the kind of stuff I see posting about uh, people posting about on Facebook, and I don't understand it. And I think when you don't understand something, it makes you think, so they must know what they're talking about if they understand it. So I'm going to, you know, pay attention Mm -hmm. to that. But I think you really do a good job of bringing it down to layman's terms and just really pragmatic with, okay, Here's some, you know, good, solid first steps. For yeah, that it's, it's the whole, you know, walking before you run concept. It's like, you know, that's kind of why I always say the first step, just get into the market in general, buy that S&P index fund. So, you know, you have some diversification, you don't have all your eggs in one basket. And then, you know, after you get some experience with that, you start to get 
gauge your comfort level and your risk tolerance, then start to venture into picking some individual companies and stick simple, you know, don't try to outsmart everybody. Like look at the apples and the home depots and the McDonald's and all those companies and the, you know, the biggest ones in the world that you understand really well and start kind of playing, testing those, um, you know, before you start trying to get into something, you know, much more specific. Uh, so many people just want to jump in and make the fast dollar. And that's just, that's usually just not, not the right way to think about it. Well, one of the good things is we're talking to the Weiss Stark community here. And um, that age range is typically 21 to 40 years old. So we do have a lot of people, you know, um, within the first five years out of college or mm -hmm. just kind of starting their families and things like that. So this is great advice for, for our Y start community. Definitely. And I can tell you, it's, 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 uh, it's a lot easier said than done. I know when I first started yeah. out, that was my tendency and, uh, you know, I'm hoping to pass on my learnings to everybody there. You know, right. I got burned more than, more than I, times than I can count. And so if I can save anybody else from like having to learn the hard way, <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm here to help do that. And just lessen the anxiety a little bit too. Cause you know, you think there's exactly. so many numbers like, out there. <laughs> things are stressful enough already. Yeah. And when you get into this stuff, like you don't want to add another layer of stress in your life with it. This is, this right. is meant to be a long-term, you know, Positive. investment yeah. for, you know, for your health, for your wealth, like, mm -hmm all all with that long-term horizon you don't want it to be something like where you have to wake up every day and, and you know jump over to your computer and figure out like oh am i up am i down that's not right you don't want to like add that complexity into your life so if you just kind of stick to the discipline of having a schedule of knowing what you're investing stick to things that you're you're familiar with you understand and you know yep like you really you don't have to add any of that any more of that stress to your life because you you, you kind of set the schedule for yourself and you, and you know what you're doing. What a good point. <laughs> you're already trying to remember to feed the dog and take the garbage out and things that, yeah, I definitely couldn't keep up with uh, the daily right. checking, especially with a one-year-old. Um, so, so final question, has everything um, with the coronavirus concerns, has that impacted the way that, you know, you guys will be doing business or the way that this industry is going to perform, or is there an impact there, or is it sort of business? So, do you mean the investment management industry as a whole? Yeah, or even you know the advice that you would give somebody for the first step. You know, is it? It's interesting. It's 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 interesting, and I hear a million different opinions every single day about what the what the ultimate impact of all of this is going to be. And when we don't know, quite honestly, we've never dealt with anything like this. Mm -hmm. I mean, what's been fascinating to me is just been seeing how much can still get done in this setting, in the work from home setting. Um, oh, yeah. Just all of the professions that are able to to manage in this environment. It's, it's, it's been amazing to me. And so I, I have to imagine, yeah, yeah, I have to imagine on the other side of this, there's going to be some changes, whether it be you know, companies saying like, hey, maybe we don't need a massive headquarters anymore. Maybe we don't need to have all of our employees in the office anymore. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I could save them a lot of money. We don't need to be flying people all over the world for meetings. We can hold like we're doing right now, Zoom, yeah. Zoom meetings just as effectively. So yeah. I have to imagine those conversations and those, those discussions are going on as, as companies and executives are seeing how this is playing out and being like, wow, I can... I can have my entire employee base engaged and productive, you know, not at the office. That's, that's, that's different. How are we going to, how are we going to adapt to that? Yeah. And that can lead to all sorts of things. I mean, think about a company that doesn't have a huge geographic exposure um, all over the country. And, you know, if they can tap into the labor pool, if they're a company in Canton, Ohio, and they could tap into the labor pool in California without having to force that person to come all the way to Canton, Ohio, but still hire them. I yeah. mean, that just gave them a huge advantage. Oh, so I absolutely. think there has to be some sort of, you know, some sort I'm, of consequences on the other side of this. I just don't know what they are. I'm looking forward to those conversations sort of post COVID because those are some things that a lot of young professionals find value in their work you know, in their day-to-day um, -day industries, you know, the flexible work schedule and the oh, ability absolutely. to work from home and things like that. So I think this has just helped us get there a little bit faster. And now sort of from the top down, we've all been affected and, 
you know, the, the young professionals in the, um, in the office aren't the ones initiating. Now it's like, oh, well, we've all seen this happen and how yeah. it can really turn out. So awesome. Well, before we go, uh, let's leave off on a fun note. Since you deal with finances and stocks and bonds don't, don't sound that exciting to me. Um, <laughs> although I know they are, but if you could buy anything with any amount of money, what would it be? Anything with any amount of money. Yes. If nothing was off limits, what would you go out and buy today? Well, the first thought that like comes to my head, it's, you know, without thinking too deep into it, I'm a big cyclist. So I'd probably, you know, if, I, if somebody just gave me a check and said, go buy something, I'd probably add a bike to the collection. Oh, um, yeah. Do you already have a bunch of bikes? <laughs> yeah. You know, they they say the common theme for for bikers is, you know, when, you, when people ask you how many bikes should you have, it's N plus one. And N <laughs> is always the number that you have right now. So another one's always a good idea. <laughs> Oh, that's um, funny. I didn't know that. <laughs> awesome. The answer to the question, but that's probably the first thing that popped in my mind. Right oh, there. it's great. No, it's great. I think my answer would have been a boat. That comes to my mind now that it's sunny outside and everything. I'm like, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. Well, my, my dad's, he's, he's a big boater. So he's got the boat thing taken care of. So I just usually just, you know, mooch off of him whenever I want to want to do that. So well, the saying for <laughs> both works. You say with cyclists, it's N plus one. My dad always said with boats, the best day. Um, the two best days in a boater's life are the day they get the boat and the day they sell the boat. <laughs> yeah, right. Then you probably heard the acronym of what boat stands for too. And then the reason why it's such a great day to sell it. What is it? It's a uh, boat is bust out another thousand. Everything you do. Yeah. On the yes, boat I have heard that. Not cheap. <laughs> it's not awesome. cheap. Well, thank you for your input and your advice and just you, um, the way your approach is really nice. And I think a lot of YPs are going to relate to and be able to benefit from just knowing, you know, it's not too late and it's not something that you really have to be scared of oh, no. and that Absolutely. you can get into. So Absolutely. Awesome. well, thank you, Tyler. We'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thanks for having me.